Good, ain't he? I want to turn your attention tonight to Isaiah chapter 4, beginning in verse 4 and verse 5. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4 and 5 right there. I want to speak to you talking about the thought, the church of flame. How many know the church of Jesus Christ needs to be flame and fire in these last days? Amen. I'm telling you here, we got to be a fire and we got to get, we got to get it on. We've got to crank the fire of the Holy Ghost up in these last days that we're living. Amen. Isaiah chapter 4 in verse 4 and 5. I want to read these scriptures right here and we're going to take off from there from where the Lord wants us to to go tonight. Amen. How many is glad once again to be in the Lord's house tonight? How many is on fire for Jesus tonight? Amen. For, listen to what the word of the Lord says. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place about Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and a smoke by day and a shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. I want you to know something right here real quick. He's still a fire aiming fire tonight. He's a consuming fire tonight. And the church of Jesus Christ in these days needs to be burning the flame. Amen. We need to be burning hot. The flame needs to get kicked up. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God, and we praise you, Father, for everything you've done, dear Lord. We ask you, Lord, to touch, dear God, tonight. Lord, give me the words you would have me to speak, dear Father, Lord. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in that precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, you make no mistake about it that we are in a spiritual battle and the church of Jesus Christ uh, of uh, this day, the blood-bought church is under an attack. Uh, the world system seems to be driving this church into a corner, challenging them. Produce your credentials. Show us what you're made of. Uh, let's see what we really are. How many believe that tonight? Uh, are you really alive as you claim to be uh, or are you dead? Uh, I don't know about you but I know one thing for sure that the true church of Jesus Christ is burning a flame tonight amen the true church of Jesus Christ is still powerful tonight amen the true church of Jesus Christ tonight still is shining with the glory of his, him in their midst tonight anybody know what I'm talking about in a day that we are living in a day that we are time that we are in it's time that we crank up the fire this world today needs a church. It needs a people that is burning on fire for the gospel of Jesus Christ. It needs some saints of God to say we're going to burn flame and we're going to be on fire for him in a world that is marked by coldness and of Laodicean. The church can be alive and on fire, but only, listen, if the Holy Spirit is moving inside of the church, what's missing in these last days is an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And many ones, people don't want the outpouring of the Spirit no more. People don't want to see a move of God. People don't want to get convicted anymore. Amen? People ain't hungry for him anymore. But I'm telling you, if we're going to get to have a church that is a flaming fire, let me tell you, we got to have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We've got to have a move of God. We've got to have a church that says I am hungry his presence is welcome inside of our midst John the Baptist declared he said that he that cometh after me is mightier than I he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire I don't know about you but I still believe in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost tonight I still believe that the Holy Ghost is still in operation tonight I still believe Believe he's still uh, moving in the mist tonight. Uh, and we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 3, uh, Luke stated this uh, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues uh, like as a fire, uh, and it set up on each of them. Uh, let me tell you, uh, I'm telling you, when he, the Holy Spirit, came through, uh, he came through 
with a blast of power. Amen. People think we're a little noisy around here. That's all right. I've never been the quiet type in my life. Anybody know what I'm saying? What are you saying? I was thinking down in the Carolinas, down there in them mountains down there. You see, we got it back there behind one of those pictures at the Shear Schoolhouse in Murphy, North Carolina. It got a little loud down there for them at a time. But I thought on that day of Pentecost, you read the Bible and you'll find out that Pentecost was noisy. Amen. Did you hear me? You'll find out Pentecost, it was a noisy situation when the Holy Ghost came through with power and with fire. How many know if you get a touch of fire, you're going to jump. Amen. How many know if you get a touch of fire, you're going to move. Amen. Anybody ever put their, ever, anybody ever put their hand on a burning stove? Guess what? You'll move. Amen. You'll move that hand. Anybody ever got their feet too close to a campfire? Then you'll move right then and there. What are you saying? I'm saying right now that the church needs to be on fire. We need to be making some noise. Amen. We need to allow the Holy Ghost to be making some noise in this area. They need to hear it. But listen, that Holy Ghost come. He's still blazing a fire. And I believe, listen, you hear what I'm about to tell you. You hear this. If the church, first church was Pentecostal. Anybody know that? The first church was Pentecostal. Amen. I'm not throwing off, but I'm just on any other. But I'm telling you a fact. The first church was Pentecostal. Don't you think the church before the coming of the Lord ought to be Pentecostal too? Amen. Did you hear what I'm telling you? I'm telling you, there ain't nothing changed. I believe they got a little excited in there. Amen. I believe they got a little happy at times. I believe they begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit uh, give them the utterance. I believe everywhere they went, they preached Jesus, amen, even under the threat uh, of persecution, even under the threat uh, of times of saying uh, you could be beaten to death, thrown into prison, even when the king says, and Caesar would say, we forbid you to speak of that name. I think about the disciples in Acts 4 and they prayed and the place was shaken and God granted unto them boldness. Anybody remember that scripture right there? Let me tell you, they made the comment we can't help but to speak the name of Jesus Christ, the one that we got a hold of us, the one that saved us, the one we seen do these great and mighty acts. I got news for you tonight in these last days. He's still pouring out his spirit. Amen. He's still delivering tonight. He's still setting free tonight. He's still healing bodies tonight. He's still working on your behalf tonight. Let me tell you, he's as active today as he was then. It ain't his fault that people don't receive. The problem, the reason people don't receive is because they don't have a fire no more. They got some smoke, but they ain't got no fire. That flaming fire of Pentecost is still moving. Amen. People's happy for a sprinkle. I want the windows of heaven open. Amen. I don't want to live on a mist. We can't live on a mist. We ain't going to accomplish nothing on a mist. We need an outpouring. We need it where the windows of heaven are open. And flood us with his spirit. I'm telling you, as we see these days come to an end, it's getting wickeder and wickeder by the day sight. The agenda of the left wing, the agenda, I call it the devil's agenda, is infuriating our households. It is, infer, it is now approaching our children. You hear, I'm going to say, if you wasn't here this morning, I'm going to hit it again. You better watch about watching Disney anymore. If you didn't see what they're doing, they got a cartoon geared at kids that got two men and two women characters in there kissing. You say, oh, it's harmless. No, whoa, it ain't harmless. It's indoctrinating them with doctrines of devils. Amen? 
It's time for the church to pick up our sword and begin to flame the fire. Amen. It's time the church to get on fire again and to preach truth again. Amen. It's time to preach hell, fire, and brimstone again. It's time to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ again. Oh, we got so worried about offending somebody. Uh Uh-oh. We got so worried that we're going to make somebody pout a little bit. Well, I got news for you. I'd rather offend you out of hell than to kiss you in it. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is all about. Listen, but these days that we're living is getting more and more wicked. It is getting vile. And I'm telling you what is needed in this 2017, I believe, yeah, that's where we're at. I was going to jump ahead a year. I'm telling you, we need the church of flame, amen? We need the flame and fire. We need a church that ain't just going to set back. We need a church that's going to get out. Let me tell you what I'm about to tell you tonight. It's time for some saints of God to get on fire tonight, amen? It's time for some people to pick up your swords and to begin to charge. It's time for you to say, I want a renewing of the Holy Ghost in my life. I want to be a flame and fire. I want to be one of his ministers. I want to tell you how many is bought with the blood of Jesus in here. Let me tell you, he didn't just call one man to this pulpit. He called a church to go and preach the gospel. He didn't call for you to do it with compromise. He called you to do it as a flame and fire. Amen? Amen. Amen. Church needs to be aflame. This world don't need dry, dead up routines. It was amazing. Boy, we rocked it out a couple nights, didn't we? In that revival. Let me tell you, if you think heaven's just a place of paddock ache, you got another thing going. Amen. You think they just playing patty cake, patty cake up there. They ain't playing that. I'll tell you right now what they're doing. Everything in heaven's praising the Lord. Amen. All the flowers are praising, the winds are praising, the trees are praising, the people are praising, the angels are praising. And it ain't praising. I'm off. No, 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 no. You know how we get when our ball team wins, when them boys win. Amen. You know how we get? We get a little excited, don't we? Can I tell you? I get a little more excited thinking about the king tonight. Amen. I get a little more excited thinking about everything Jesus has done for me. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? I told you I'm going to jump off this thing one night. Sometimes in my tenure here, I'm going to jump off. <laughs> it's going to hit me so much, I'm going to hit right in here. Let me tell you what I'm getting at tonight. God's looking for a church that is flame and fire. Amen? God's looking for a people that is hungry. God's looking for a people that's going to stand up in these last days. Amen? He ain't looking for a church that's going to back off. He's looking for a church that's going to stand up. Amen? Did you hear me? We're going to stand up against radical Islam. Amen? It's still evil. It's inspired from the pits of hell. We're going to stand up against sin. Amen? Anything that try, it comes against the things of God, guess what? It's still wrong. I don't care how much somebody tries to justify it. If it's wrong in the word, guess what? It's still wrong today, amen? And let me tell you, you get people saying, do you think it's wrong for me to do this? Do you think it's wrong for me to do that? Well, if if you've got to ask somebody that if it's wrong, guess what? There's a good indication it's wrong, amen? I'm telling you right there. But I'm telling you, God's looking for a church that is a flame and fire, He's looking for some people. He's looking for those called out one everyday people to perform the ministry to the people of this world. He's looking for some people to give them a burning blast of the Holy Spirit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He's looking for some people that he can pour his spirit out into tonight. Amen? He's looking for some people that he can get a hold of tonight. Had one hatched pin this prayer like this on his day. He said, breathe on me. Breathe on God. 
till I'm wholly thine, till all the earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Anybody know what he's saying? He said, pour yourself on me, breathe on me until the world knows that I'm in your presence. Charles Wesley wanted God to blast him and to burn him until he glowed with God's spirit. Oh, that in me, he said these words, oh, that in me, that sacred fire might now begin to glow, burn up the dross, burn up base desire, and make the mountains flow. Thou who are at Pentecost didst fall, and all my sins consume. Come, Holy Ghost, for thee I call spirit of burning. Come, can you and I begin to pray that the Holy Ghost will glow in us, amen? Anybody got that desire that when you walk down the road that they know you've been in the presence of God? Have you got that desire for this property that they know when they pass by there's something going on down here on Clear Ridge Road, amen? Did you hear what I'm telling you? We got to get to the point that says let us get to a point where God will use us, that we we're burning with the fire of the Holy Spirit inside of our life. We need a revival. This is the kind of church that God has anointed. The church that God has appointed to bring revival to a hurting world. I want to tell you the reason there's so much attack on Pentecost is because it's genuine. If there's always a genuine, you can rest assured there's a counterfeit. There's always, you know, they don't counterfeit nothing that ain't real. Did you hear me? Why do you think the devil wants to counterfeit Pentecost? He does. But there's still that genuine, real moving of the Spirit also. Just like a $100 bill. You know, they counterfeit $100 bills because there's a real one. If it wasn't real, why in the world would the devil waste his time trying to counterfeit something that wasn't real? Amen. I'm telling you, Pentecost is real. It is real. I'm telling you, growing up in Pentecost country, let me tell you, that's what the Carolina, the southern states, I'm just going to be honest, was one time known as the Bible Belt down there around the Carolinas. It was known as the Bible Belt. I don't know how it was up here, but I can tell you down south, there was a time on Sundays, there wasn't nothing that was open. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There was a time where people knew. But now what's happened? We've allowed the flames of Pentecost. We've got a glow. We've got an ember. But we no longer got a flame. Amen. Did you hear me? I believe God's looking to flame up Pentecost again. I believe God's looking to bring some people in to get a hold of them. Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? So what if they're critics? The biggest critics will be the ones that jump down the aisle. I've already learned that. I'm one. Even growing up in it. You see where I'm at tonight, don't you? But we need some people to say, Lord, let you burn me with your presence. Let me glow with you. Hey, man, I want to glow when ain't made by the world. Did you hear me? I want to glow this divinely. Hey, man, I want to glow that is heavenly. Anybody know what I'm saying? I want them to know here comes a crazy preacher from North Carolina. Here comes a crazy preacher from the backwoods of North Carolina. That's where I'm from. My pastor, you know, Junior, you've been down there. You and Justin seen where I'm from. You know where it's at. Here comes one of those mountain folk down there coming up here preaching Pentecost. I'm telling you, it's real tonight. It's real tonight. God's still in the delivering business. He's still in the saving business. I'm telling you, people may want to reject him, but every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess that he is Lord tonight. Did you hear me? 
People don't want nothing to do with old-fashioned Pentecostal preaching no more. But I'm telling you, in a world that is in the shape that it is right now, the only answer is for a church to be aflame tonight. Amen? You know, it ain't time to get cold. It ain't time to get dead. It ain't time to get lukewarm. It's time to get fired up. It's time to start throwing some logs on the fire. Anybody else see the devil's crowd? Amen. They go bragging about it. They brag about everything they do. Well, I'm here to brag about Jesus tonight. Amen. I'm here to tell you what Jesus is doing. You want me to tell you what Jesus is doing? He's setting some people on fire tonight. Did you hear me? You want me to tell you what Jesus is doing? He's lighting some fire in here tonight. He ain't setting no smoke screens. He's looking for a full-blown fire. He ain't looking for no smoke screens tonight. Uh, he's looking for an outpouring, amen? Uh, he ain't looking for a drizzle. He's looking for a downpour tonight. Uh, he's looking to flood you tonight. Lord, let the church get aflame tonight. It's going to start with us, every ordinary person. It's time to get fired up. We're running out of time. People do not know how close that this thing is to wrapping up. People have no idea how close it is to this thing wrapping up. This thing's coming to a screeching halt quick. Every day there's prophecy being fulfilled or coming into play. But just to be honest, there's nothing that really has to happen before the rapture. Everything that seems to be happening seems to be pointing to the great tribulation. And if we're seeing things that saying, this thing's around the corner, you about ready to get me to jump. How much closer are we are to a blowing of a trumpet? Amen. Let me tell you again, you think you, we ought to be quiet? Let me tell you, when he blows that trumpet, it's going to be so loud with that shout, it's going to wake the dead. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, we're close to this thing. Coming to a screeching halt. I ain't even on my outline. Throw it out the window. We're so scrolled. We're so close to this thing wrapping up. Let me tell you, I'm telling you, you mark what I'm about to tell you, he ain't coming for a cold and indifferent people. He ain't coming for a lukewarm. He's coming for a church, for a people that is a flaming fire. Did you hear me? You glued? When he comes, you're still going to be glued. Did you, did you just say that, preacher? I just said it. Amen. I'm telling you, a weak, anemic church ain't going to cut it in these days that we're living in. A powerless church ain't going to do anything. That ain't what this world needs. I can tell you what goes on down in North Carolina. It broke my heart. I hit it this morning a little bit. To hear just down there where my little girl's at in Macon County, over 20 overdoses in the last 30 to 60 days. And, and many of those have resulted in death. Sadly, you know the end of that. And I think to myself... Thank the Lord some of the churches got together and said, we're going to meet on the court square. And we're going to have an old-fashioned prayer meeting. There's the answer right there. Let me tell you, it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise up in these last days. Said, we're going to gather. We ain't going to listen to the ACLU. We ain't going to listen to these groups that tells us to shut up. Guess what? I'm going to get a little bit louder. Amen. It's time to be burning. It's time to be aflame. I'm going to burn for him now because I don't want to burn later. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'd rather burn for him and be on fire for him now than to be, be, a, be burning later under consequences of rejecting the king. I'm telling you in these days, he's looking for a church that's going to be a flame. He's looking for a church where he can ignite a people. Can I tell you? 
He, he, he wants to ignite. He wants to ignite you. It ain't about the man behind preaching this message. He wants to ignite you. If you want to get ignited, he'll ignite you. Amen. The church needs to be a flame. I look in the book of Acts. I see a church laid hands on the sick. They're recovered. I see an anointing so strong on Peter that walking past his shadow healed him. I see a church that raised the dead. Let me tell you, it's still happening. Oh, really, preacher? Yes, it is. I can show you incidents after incidents in my years of ministry where God moved in a mighty way. Sister Mindy, look what all God's done for you. Right back there is a testimony. Some of you a testimony. I'm telling you, he's still in the outpouring business. He's still a moving tonight. Let me tell you, I believe this world needs to see the genuine move of God. It don't need a dry, dead-up routine. It needs a church that is feeding in the fire. Amen. Guess what? We got loud one night. I think we could get a little bit louder. Amen. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I'm saying? You, well, I got loud this night, but can't we get a little bit louder? Amen. Can't we get a little bit louder? Can't we get a little bit more fire going? I'm telling you, I love those outpourings where it's just a moving in the old. I don't want to contribute it to just then because he's still doing it today. Hey, man, what you read there, he's still doing today. I'm telling you right now, you get a taste of him, you won't look for nothing else. Anybody believe that tonight? You get a taste of Christ, you get a taste of his spirit, you ain't going to look for nothing else. Time to switch labels, amen? Quit looking to the world and start looking to his spirit. But we need a church that's a flame and fire. God's looking for some people that he can ignite tonight. He's looking for some vessels in the midst of this world that we are living. In the midst of this confrontation that's right before us. Let me tell you, we're in the climax I know people say, I heard this all my life. Well, I'm going to keep preaching it, just like Noah did. Because just like Noah did, I heard he's coming all my life. Where's he at? Don't worry, he's coming. Don't worry, he's going to catch you. Don't worry, he's going to catch you off guard. Don't worry about that. If you got that attitude, don't worry. He's going to catch you right where you least expect it at. Uh, I can promise you one thing. I don't know the day or the hour, but there's one thing I can tell you. He's a coming. They mocked Noah about the flood, didn't they? But guess what happened one day? It started raining. Boy, those that mocked found out real quick, didn't they? Sons, lots, son-in-laws mocked him too. Guess what happened? The very moment Lot was took out of there, fire and brimstone rained from heaven. I'm telling you, it ain't a time to get cold. It's a time to get moving. You cold, get moving, amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You get moving, you ain't going to get cold, amen? Anybody know what I'm saying? You get you cold, you get moving in the spirit. You, it ain't going to be long. You're going to be sweating. You're going to be burning hot, Amen? You tell you why I get cold in church? Talking spiritually cold. Because they never move. They never seek his face. They never hunger for him. I'm telling you, give him all you got. He's looking for some flaming fires. But let me tell you what's going to have to happen. We're in a war. I've told you, I preach this and I'll preach this till he comes. The closer we go to the end, the more wicked, the more vile, that we're, it's, you're going to see it. I seen where a boy thought he was a girl, got on the girls' wrestling team, getting to beat up all these girls in the wrestling. Anybody seen that? Yeah, this is going on because he thinks he's a girl. He, they let him join the girls' wrestling team, and they're bragging about how he's all undefeated. 
And I think to myself, yeah, really. But it's going to get more wicked and vile. But I'm going to tell you, here's what we're going to have to do. The altar has got to get rebuilt. You know, Elijah rebuilt the altar that was torn down on Mount Carmel. If you want a fire to fall, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to build the altar, eh? rebuild the altar. What are you getting at, preacher? You're going to have to get back to the old past. Amen? You're going to have to get back to seeking the face of the Lord, not playing la-la land with him. You want a moving of the Holy Ghost? It's going to take you repairing the altar. You be that sacrifice. Put yourself down and watch the fire from heaven consume you. Let me tell you, when they get a hold of the real, they're going to know it was the Lord God Jehovah that done it. Amen. This world needs to see the hand of the Lord God Jehovah. This nation needs to see the hand of God. Amen. I don't want to throw off on the rest of the world because you go into countries around the world, you talk to missionaries, they'll tell you what they see over there. How God moves when they got to seek the face of God. Amen. Oh, but we want to just go in and play. God ain't looking for playing. He's looking for a fire. Amen. He's looking for some people he can ignite. He's looking for some people he can use in these last days. He's looking for some people that want to be his vessel. He's looking for some people that, he, that they want that glow of him on. Anybody want that glow? Knowing that they've been in his presence. I'm telling you tonight, church, it's time to wake up. We're running out of time. Did you hear me? Time is this short. You don't know what is about to happen. Lord, I've told you. We was talking about it coming back from North Carolina. The people we've known in the last few weeks that now they either have gone on or now on life support. It blowed my mind out. Just a moments ago, they could have been doing fine in just a split second. Things can happen. People don't realize young and old, it, it, it's no different. And another thing, every day every, we talk about how quick everything this year is going by. Anybody realize that we're already almost a third way here into this year? We're in March already. Did you hear what I'm about ready to tell you? This thing's accelerating, amen? Anybody believe the days are speeding up? I do. <laughs> I know there's still 24 hours, but it seems like he's putting this thing on a fast track, amen? What's going to happen one day in the moment? in the twinkling of an eye. He's coming for a bride, amen. He's coming for a church. He's gonna pull his flaming church out of here, amen. He's gonna pull his servants out of here and we're gonna be called up to meet the Lord in the air. You don't believe me? You go read the book of Matthew 24. You go read the signs of the end times and you tell me you don't hear everything that he said thousands of years ago being fulfilled before our very eyes. Church, it's time to get on fire. It's time to get a flaming. Amen. Amen. It's time to be that vessel that God wants. We got a window and opportunity. We better get a flame. You ain't hungry, you need to get hungry. You ain't thirsty, you need to get thirsty. If you're happy in a dry, dead up routine, you need to get this altar. I don't know about you, but I want a little bit more of him. You see, I have as much as him as I want, amen? Anybody believe that tonight? I can get as close to God as I want. I can never walk too close to him. I could be walking here and still get a closer with, walk with him. Amen. But in these last days, we got to get to the point where to understand this thing's short. This thing's coming quick. 
You don't know what's going to happen in a moment's time. But if one thing's for sure, when he comes, I want to see him, me burning. Amen. I want to simulate. I want him to know. I want him to have, I want to be burning for him when he shows up again. I think about Jesus in his early age. Let me tell you something about him in his early age. They looked for him one day when he was a young child. You know where he was at? He was in the temple. He said, I'm about my father's business. People don't realize we're here for one purpose. We're here to be servants of Jesus Christ. I didn't come to North Carolina, from North Carolina up here to just to please you and to be your friend. I come up here to be his ambassador. Amen. I come up here to speak the word. I come up here to deliver his word to to you, amen. I come up here because he called me for this time. Did you hear me? What I'm telling you, you ain't here to just be pleasing the people, you ain't here to just be patting them on the back. You are here, you are called to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are called to preach repentance, amen. I got one. Listen, the people are so worried about it. And hell's lining up every day with people. Busloads are going into hell. Did you hear me? Busloads, multitudes. Let me tell you something. The Bible never says heaven expanded itself, does it? But what does it do say expands itself daily? Hell expands itself. It means it grows larger by the day. Wow. I want to pluck as many people out from going there as I can. But we're going to have to be on fire. We're going to have to be at flaming fire. We're going to have to be a church that's on fire. You're going to have to purpose as long as the Lord tarries. We're going to be on fire. Amen. That means I've got to throw something logs on the fire every day. Amen. I've got to get up when I don't feel like it. And I've got to put my, some logs on that fire. Amen. I ain't going to let, let me tell you, don't let the devil throw water on you. Amen. Anybody ever had that? All of a sudden, you'd be feeling good one day. And you feel all spiritually high. You feel like ain't nothing going to get you down. And all of a sudden, here comes somebody with a bucket of water and try to throw it on you to dose your fire out. Let me tell you, tell them to go get another bucket because that one dose ain't going to put it out and the next bucket ain't going to put it out either. I'm going through with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Jeremiah, he, he, he had a discouraging time. Anybody knows, anybody ever read about Jeremiah? Everything he went through, not one single convert, but he was a prophet. He preached it down the middle, but not one single convert. One day he said, I just feel like quitting. I feel like quitting, but he says, I can't. Because it's like fire that shut up in my bones. If you've ever done anything for God, you know what he felt like. You've ever been behind the pulpit, you know what it feels like. Let me tell you, but you can't because it's like fire that shut up in my bones. Some say, why come you can't be still? Well, I tell them, when I get up here, I got something burning in me, and I can't quit moving, amen? I can't quit dancing. I can't quit shouting. I can't quit because there's something that's inside of me that is a burning, Amen? What makes them dance? Something inside of you making you dance, amen? I'm talking about core death. I'm talking about a spiritual dance before the Lord. But the church, it's time to wake up. It's time to get a flaming. Time short. Jesus is coming. I said Jesus is coming. We don't have that much time left. This year's flying by. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know where we'll be one minute to the next, amen? But I know one thing. As long as I keep the fire going, I know where I'm going, amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know where I'm leading to. Anybody know what I'm saying? I know the end result, amen? You see, I know the end result. 
I know as a child of God, I stay on fire with him. I stay moving with him. Guess what? I know where I'm going to end up at. Amen? I know where my end place is. Let me tell you where it's at. It's in his father's house where there's many mansions at tonight. Amen? I leave this world. Guess what? I've always laughed at him. Threaten me with that. Because if I leave this world, guess where I'm going? I'm going to a better place. I t- said, said some one time, yeah, you could tr- they could try to kill me, but they don't realize the favor they'll be doing me. I know people think I'm crazy when I said that. Did you hear what? But they don't realize where I'm going. Did you hear me? They don't realize what I got in store for me. You think I'm loud here? You wait till I get down Holy Ghost Boulevard. Amen? You think we're shouting here? You wait till you get up there and see him for the first time. Amen? Lord, I could preach all night. They think we're crazy. I've been told that many times. I said, we got that speaker thing. We're in all kinds of Muslim countries right now. I've been waiting to get something from them. But I'm going to preach Jesus, amen? It's about flaming fires. God's looking for some people that he could get on fire. He's looking for some people that he could ignite tonight. Listen, time's short. And he's looking for a flaming fire. He's looking for people that will allow the Spirit of God to move. Amen. I didn't even get on down to my next point. But everyone's standing. Every head bowing, every eyes closed. Who wants to get a touch of him tonight? Maybe you don't need to be. Maybe you're not standing where you need to be with him tonight. The Lord's here. Maybe you need a touch of him tonight. Who says, I want a touch of him? I want a move of him. I want him to burn on me. I want him to grab a hold of me. I want to burn brightly for him in these days that we're living in. Did you hear me? How many want to burn for him tonight? How many want to be a blaming vessel for him tonight? God's here to ignite you. I said God's here to ignite you tonight. Oh, this may be it. What happens? God wants to ignite this church. He wants to ignite you. Lord, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.